Merry Christmas. For our um, Advent today, let us light these candles and complete this circle as we rejoice in the light that shines in the darkness and declare with hope, peace, joy, and love, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Advent hope moves us, and Advent peace stills us, and Advent joy stirs us. Advent love leads us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flames to this Advent af affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah, whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our peace is sealed, our joy is complete, and our love is found. Rejoice, a Savior has been. Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when <coughs> Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And when the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And then they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying, that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. As we kind of prepare our hearts for Christmas communion this Christmas day, if you, if you did not pick up the elements, they are right outside the door there. You want to be sure to grab one of those if you have not yet. But you know, as I was thinking about this, a movie scene that really touches my heart and it probably touches your heart as well. It's in the movie, The Passion of the Christ. We've all, I'm sure, seen that. And, and, and in this particular scene, Mary is shown watching her son as his beaten and tortured body slowly moves. He stumbles and falls in this scene with the weight of the cross coming down upon his shoulders, if you remember that. And, and, and his body is just bruised, it's beaten, and it's bleeding, and he's lying on the ground with the weight of the cross on top of him. Well, then the movie kind of does a flashback. It shows the scene of Mary. She is running toward baby Jesus, a, a child Jesus, as he has fallen and he scraped his knee. And Mary's motherly instinct kicks in. She's running and she's worried that this child, her child, to make sure that he is okay. These are thought-provoking, I think, and really emotional images. And at least for me, I think maybe for a lot of us, they, these images, they begin to humanize Jesus just a little bit. We begin to see him as one of us. We begin to see him as a man or in the flashback scene as a child with a mother. And for Mary, this child is her son. And actually, this son, this baby, this child who we celebrate the birth of today is not only the son of Mary, if we think about it. Really, he is our son, too. Isaiah states it clearly, as we've been talking the last few weeks, when Isaiah says this, he says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I believe that we must come to a point of ownership. Ownership. We must come to recognize that this baby Jesus, the one we celebrate today, is our son. The promise for our atonement. The hope of Israel. And definitely the hope of all mankind. This baby, this, this son, this savior of the world, he is just that. He is the savior of the world. And we gather together today to proclaim a risen Savior's birth today, don't we? But at the same time, we also want to claim a risen Savior's death and burial and resurrection. But most of all, this Son of ours, this Savior, He loved us. He died for us. And He is returning again. That's what Holy Communion is all about. The scripture tells us that we must lift him up. For the scripture says when we lift him up, that he will draw people to himself. Our job as Jesus followers is to lift him up in our life every day. And when we do that, and when we lift him up even on this busy day, this busiest of all seasons and scenes that we are in, when we lift him up in our thoughts, I believe that we are drawn to him. And then he will be in his rightful place. He will be the center of our worship. I believe it is this Jesus that we are worshiping today. That he will lead us in reaching in. Reaching up. And reaching out with his hope to a world that desperately needs it. So I'm asking you today to join in celebration of the birth of Jesus. <clears throat> to look forward in anticipation of his second coming and to proclaim today that he is the savior in your life that Jesus is the God of Williamsburg Church of the Nazarene Amen church Amen. let's take our communion cup and you can go ahead and peel the bottom which has got the piece of bread on it if somebody needs help around you you can help them as well We'll start with this little piece of bread. We all have that, don't we? We all have a small piece of bread. This bread symbolizes Jesus' body that was broken for you and for me. <clears throat> so today I want to take communion in celebration of him coming to earth to be with us. And when we take communion, we also want to have anticipation of his coming again. And in taking communion today, receiving communion today, we want to proclaim that he is Jesus. He is Lord of your life. You may take and eat. Now let's take the juice and carefully peel that off. Help those, if someone around you, if they need it. This symbolizes the blood that Jesus spilled for you. He came and he walked among us because he loved us. And he went to the cross for us because of his love for us. He spilled his blood for you. So today as we take communion, I want to celebrate once again his coming. We want to look forward with anticipation of his second coming. And in taking communion today... Let's proclaim that he is Lord of your life. You may take and drink. Father, we come to you today, Lord, thanking you so much for your sacrifice that all started with the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. We thank you, Jesus. We celebrate the fact that you loved us so much that you came to be with us came and walked among us you felt our hurts our sorrows our, our joys our, our pains you know exactly what we feel at every moment we celebrate the fact that you are with us now and Lord we look forward to your second coming when you will come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords 
And may we proclaim today, this day, that we celebrate your birth, that we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. May we proclaim that you are the Lord and Savior of our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. They 
did not know that lying in a manger low, a Savior King who had no home has come to heal our sorrows. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? Shepherds counting sheep at night, do not fear the glory light. You are precious in his sight. God has come to raise the lowly. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are, it may set you apart, when you make, make room in your heart, and trade your dreams for his glory, make room in your heart, make room in your heart. tight every wrong will be made right the road is straight the burdens light for in his hands he holds tomorrow is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there room in heart for God to write his story. Is there room in your heart that may set you apart? When you make room in your heart, trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart a great song. I hope that you have made room in your heart for Jesus. You know, when Mr. Phillips Brooks, he was the minister of the Holy Trinity Church in Philadelphia, he was asked to give one of the funeral addresses for President Abraham Lincoln. And he thought to himself, he said, well, surely his eulogy of the president would be the most famous lines he, had, he ever wrote. He was actually wrong. You see, shortly after the funeral, Reverend Brooks, he was wore out and exhausted from years of the war, and, and, and he needed some rest. He took a sabbatical from preaching. He went and visited the Holy Land, hoping to find some much-needed 
rest and peace. Reverend Brooks, he visited Bethlehem in December of 1865. And his itinerary that time, it included a horseback ride between Jerusalem and to Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. Bethlehem was still a small town at that point. The commercialism had not quite got there like it is today. Reverend Brooks, he said this. He said, before dark, we rode out of the town to the field where they say the shepherds saw the star. Somewhere in those fields we rode through, the shepherds must have been. As we passed, he said, the shepherds were still keeping watch over their flocks. And as he looked out at the landscape of Bethlehem that, that Christmas Eve, he a line to a poem came to him and he wrote this and he wrote this line down O little town of Bethlehem how still we see thee lie above thy dark and dreamless sleep silent stars go by several years later so let's fast forward in our mind several years later the reverend he wanted a Christmas a new Christmas song for the children to sing during a Christmas Eve service at his church. So he reads back in his memory to that time and for inspiration from his Holy Land visit. And the poem that he wrote, it, it painted in words the sights and sounds of that little town of Bethlehem he visited all those years before. The good reverend, he said this, I remember especially on Christmas Eve when I was standing in the old church in Bethlehem close to the spot where Jesus was born. He said when the whole church was ringing hour after hour with the splendid hymns of praise to God. He said how again and again it seemed as if I could hear voices I knew well. And they were telling each other of the wonderful night of the dear Savior's birth. What came from his pen was a Christmas carol that has lived to become as we know a worldwide he asked his church organist at the time, Mr. Lewis Redner, he said, I've got this poem. I want you to put some music to it for the children to sing on our Christmas Eve service. So Mr. Redner, he sat down at the piano and he began to play some tunes and, and he just could not find the right tune to carry those words that he had in front of him. He tried and he tried, could not come up with it. Finally, it was the night before the Christmas Eve service. And he had a blank piece of paper where the notes should be for the music. He just couldn't find the right ones. So he did what we he could really, and we would probably have done too. It was late at night, so he just went to bed. He said that it was in the night that it seemed like that he was hearing music. So he woke up right away, and he went to that empty sheet of paper, and he started writing down the notes that he heard exactly the way he heard them. And that's how we sing the melody today. He was so excited when, when, he, when he presented this, the, the music with this poem, this new, brand new song to Reverend Brooks that next day. He, he said, this must be a gift from heaven. The children sang it that day, and many say that the children sounded like a choir of angels as they sang this brand new song written especially for them. And as we know, a little town of Bethlehem, it quickly had become a favorite all around the world. It was published in 1874. And we are blessed to continue singing it nearly 150 years later. We are still singing that song that the Reverend Brooks penned on his trip, about his trip to the Holy Land. Within the beauty of old little town of Bethlehem is one of God's promises from the prophet Micah. And Micah said this, said, Bethlehem, you are one of the little towns of Judah. But from you I will bring a ruler for Israel whose family line goes back to ancient times. I really like the last verse of old little town of Bethlehem. It's a prayer, really, and it's an awesome Christmas prayer. It says this. A holy child of Bethlehem. Descend to us, we pray. 
cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Now that you know a little bit of the backstory of Reverend Brooks' song with Mr. Redner's accompaniment, let's listen to the song maybe with brand new ears as Mark sings, O Little Town. Got to, got to meet 
one another and talk about that, one of the verses in there. But th that's a great song. Thank you, Mark, for singing that. We've come to the part in our service where we are going to share the light of Jesus through the Christ candle. So everyone should have a candle. If not, once again, they're right out, right out the, the doors there. You can grab one real quick. But what we want to do is we want to, there's enough of us here, we can make a, uh, we'll make a small circle around the front here and, and then through the through one of the pews there like that, maybe about the third the third row, maybe we might be able to get everybody around. So, and, and so go ahead and start making your way this way if you guys would. Just kind of fill this area in around here, and we will. That way, we can share the light of Jesus with our neighbor. And and this year, I want to I want to have uh, Melanie and Randy come up and stand next to me, and because they are going to, they're there. They, I don't know a family that has went through what this family here has this year, and definitely. So we want they're going to light a memory. Uh, candle in memory of mom and all those other ones and then I'll, I want to give you guys the light and share it around the, the circle so let's all just gather in let's make our circle here if you need to sit down and you're in a pew that's fine you can do that as well but let's all get in here together we can do this thank you for coming out and in and, and this crazy weather that we've been having you guys can come on in here we want to share this light i'm going to get the light right from the christ candle and what this symbolizes is the light of jesus right how we as jesus followers and those who who love jesus we get to share that with our neighbor and when we share the light of jesus with our neighbor and then they share it with their neighbor and the light will continue to go around the circle now if you want to go maybe like chris's and he can start going that way as well One of my favorite things to do in a Christmas service or a Christmas Eve service, whichever it may be, is to share the light of Jesus. Because that's what we do as Jesus followers, isn't it? We want to share that light. The light is making its way, and then it's going to be a complete circle of light. Everybody got theirs lit. We're going to sing probably the most famous Christmas carol out there and, and maybe your favorite is definitely probably my favorite. Mark's going to lead us as we sing silently. <laughs>
Let's sing out the first verse with just our voices only. <clears throat> Jesus is with you. Pray that the joy of Jesus lights your life. Pray that you share the hope of Jesus. You have the love of Jesus in you. Hold your candles up high. This, this symbolizes the light of Jesus once again. We are to share this light with those around us, with those we love, with those we come in contact with, because Jesus came to earth. He left the splendor of heaven to come down to a filthy earth because he loves you and we celebrate his birth today let's look at the flame take a real good look at it see how it dances around see how it glows see how it's giving off its light that's what Jesus does for us on the count of three we're going to blow our lights out of our candles but that light still burns in our heart and then we're going to pray one two three Lord Jesus come to you today. God, thanking you for the perfect gift all those Christmases ago. God, it is the hope that you brought to us that sustains us. We thank you, God, for your peace, for your joy, for your love. Lord, you are amazing. We could never outgive that gift of the first Christmas morning. Lord, you say the only gift you want is us. May we present ourselves to you again this year. As we make 2023 the year of the impact, God, you will lead us and guide us. We believe and we pray. We love you, Jesus. May we continue to spread the light of Jesus everywhere we go. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. amen, amen. We once again, we want to say Merry Christmas. We love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out on this. Enjoy some time with family and friends today. Try not to eat too much. And have a good time. And be Jesus to someone this week. The, the week that we celebrate Jesus' birth. God bless you, church. You are dismissed.